On this week's episode of A Taste of Honey TV, we have Mr. Ty Cooper with Entertainment Marketing Part 1, Union Actress and Acting Coach Laura Reichard, with guest host Sharif Folks. You are watching A Taste of Honey TV. So you want to be a model, an actress, a producer, a musician. So you want to be in the entertainment or media industry. We show you the ins and outs of the entertainment and media industry. Our main goal is to educate and inspire those interested in the entertainment and media industry. You are watching A Taste of Honey TV. Hello everyone. My name is Sharif Folks. I'd like to welcome everyone to A Taste of Funny TV. I'm here with Ty Cooper. Ty, you broke into the industry in many different realms of this media. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you begun into this journey of yours? Well, um, in 93, I was a student at um, Norfolk State University. And I started, uh, actually I observed as a student, Okay. Even myself, um, I looked around and myself and, you know, we need, you know, college students need breaks. Mm -hmm. You know, we need um, an outlet for mm -hmm. our energy. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. In, in Norfolk State, at that time, not now, mm -hmm. it's far different now, um, which is good. But at that time, as a student, you know, um, Charlotte, I mean, um, Norfolk State was a party, considered a party school. Right. Right. So, but the thing about it, so many people are doing parties. I didn't want to mm -hmm. do, you know, I didn't want to get into that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I picked up. From New York, you know, we do ski trips all the time in New York. Okay. It's like a dime a dozen. Okay. In Virginia, right. it wasn't. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, people mm -hmm. used to always say, hey, um, black people don't ski. Right. I, I thought right. that was the most ignorant statement in the world because right. I've been skiing before. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, picked that, I picked that event up and I said, you know what, let me create College Weekend on the Slopes. Okay. Where anyone could go, but I target all the colleges, you know, okay. Norfolk State, um, Hampton University, mm -hmm. Virginia um, Union, right. Virginia State, you mm -hmm. know. And, um, and from there, I picked up other events, College Rican at Kings Dominion, uh, Freaknik in Atlanta, wow. Black College Reunion, Daytona Beach, um, a lot of different university homecoming events mm -hmm. where I provide the bus trips to mm -hmm. um, those cities or, the, you know, those cities and have the hotel, the, the whole, um, the bus outing, mm -hmm. the tickets to the different events and mm -hmm. put, put those packages together. So that's why I became known for not being a party promoter, but mm -hmm. being a bus trip promoter for the most bus part at first. But what was different is that on most of my bus trips, I promote parties. Mm -hmm. So if I do the ski trip, I promote parties at the ski trip. Okay. You know, pajama parties. Right. You know, whatever. Um, right. Go-go concerts and stuff like that. And then, um, <clears throat> and then five years later is when I started getting into more into other things. Wow. I'm glad you mentioned that because in addition to becoming <clears throat> a very successful party promoter, it says you also got been involved in comedy tours. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little about that. Well, in 2002, so that was basically um, nine years after I got into the business. Okay. Um, I started managing a, um, a mm -hmm. comedian named mm -hmm. Corey Crenshaw, who used to be on, uh, who was on BET Comic Reel. Wow, okay. And he introduced me to a lot of different other comedians. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, look, this is what we're going to do. These comedians may be funnier than you. Okay. They may be more popular than you, mm -hmm. but we're going to have them open up for you. Wow. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay them. I'm going to do a show with them but you're going to be the headliner wow. or, or, and you'll never get this opportunity mm -hmm. from anyone else. But mm -hmm. because I'm managing you, right. this is how we're going to flip it. Okay. And then, um, so that's what he did. He, he got me in contact with other um, comedians mm -hmm. and, you know, I started doing a lot of comedy shows. I stopped, I stopped managing him cause he had some, you know, well, I stopped managing him. Okay. Um, and then I kept on with the relationships that he introduced me to. And after that, it was like four after, after that four, Four comedy tours, wow. you know, college comedy tours, mm -hmm. and then I went on to doing non-college comedy tours, which I'm doing right now. Wow, that is very, very awesome. Right now, we would like to get to a commercial break. Um, hold tight with us. We'll be right back in a minute. Good morning, I'm Steve Isant. Thanks for having me on the show. A Taste of Honey TV. 
voice acting for those of you who don't know. Hello, how you doing? I'm comedian Big Joe. A taste of Honey TV. Hi, my name is Greg. Uh, we're currently I'm working with Espute Productions on a full-length feature documentary. We're out here in Colorado Springs. We're at the Olympic Training Center. A taste of Honey TV. I'm very excited that the show is about to start. Pieces Magazine. Guys, we here at Velo Magazine. A taste of Honey TV. Make sure to like us on Facebook. Ethnicities, mm -hmm. you know, laughing at the same jokes at the mm -hmm. same time. And enjoying comedy. Yeah, because at that, at that moment, mm -hmm. we are no longer different. Mm -hmm. we, we laugh at the same jokes. We're mm -hmm. making, just because we have a different social economic class we mm -hmm. come from, we're making you different than I if we laugh at the same joke. Exactly. Right. Now, when Very we good. leave that building, mm -hmm. I don't have no control anymore. <laughs> you know, they're going to go back uh, into their own little bubbles. Uh -huh. But at least they may possibly see, it may be a Glenmore uh -huh. resident, it may be a West Haven resident, mm -hmm. but they may see each other somewhere and say, I see him at, you mm -hmm. know, I see him at so-and-so. Then they may not speak. They should mm -hmm. speak. But that's a whole other level of right. something else that has to be broken. Mm -hmm. I can't break that part. Right. You know. Chill is diversity from every side of the spectrum. Yeah. Which is awesome. And comedians are the best because... Mm -hmm. You bring the diversity. Mm -hmm. You know, I bought Bridget McManus here. She's mm -hmm. a lesbian female out of um, California. Wow. I bought um, Skiba, mm -hmm. black, from D.C. Um, David Foster, mm -hmm. white, out of New York. Um, Gina Brillon, Puerto mm -hmm. Rican, out of New York. Mm -hmm. Shing Wang, Asian, out of New York. Mm -hmm. And all these have been successful. John Lasser, black, out of Brooklyn. So all these, you know, all these comedians have been, you know, different ethnicities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But... They've also <laughs> make fun of mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no one's offended. If you are offended, then you don't need to come to a, a stand-up comedy show. Yes, sir. But, um, you know, no one's offended uh -huh. because they may say something about the black guy. Right. They're going to say something about the white guy. That's right. And the Puerto Rican. And, and, and this and that, this and that, this and that, this and <laughs> right, that. So, right. so everybody's going to be offended? Right, right. If you're going to be offended, then this is called equal, equal offensive Mm -hmm. Opportunity you for all, you know. To offend somebody. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But it's not. It's not like that. It's all about fun, and, right? And they love it. You know, they, the I man. They've been supportive, mm -hmm. and the, the website to that is um, National Stand Up Comedy Series. That's what's saying. Of you was know. out there, National Stand, Stand Up, Up Comedy, Comedy Series. Series. Yeah, but um, that's actually the name. But the actual website is SeavilleStandUpComedy.com. But that even moves to our next topic, sir. I mean, that just sounds fantastic. You know, what you do in the community, you're promoting, you're bringing people together. But we also like to go more mm -hmm. into your book. Okay. Hey, you're putting out a book. Yeah. Could you tell us about that, sir? Well, um, I'm not going to release the title of it like, right now. Okay. But, um, well, I can because the title is, you know, I sent away for the title. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'd rather not because I may change it and okay. I may spend, do a spin on it. Okay. Um, but the, the book is about the entertainment business, uh -huh. you know, how to break into it as a promoter. Wow. Wow, um, that's awesome. Yeah, it has, it has, I don't hold back, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, in, in promoting, mm -hmm. you know, you have a lot of different things that you may do that's like right on the edge mm -hmm. of not really being considered as the right thing, <laughs> mm -hmm. right thing to do. Mm -hmm. it's, the promotion business is a crazy business sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, um, so, you know, 18 years of experience, mm -hmm. there's been some lines that I walked on, mm -hmm. and they're all in a book. Right. It's like full disclosure. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all in a book. Wow. Um, but, um, you know, it goes into how to start your business. Mm -hmm. Do everything legitimately. Right. You know, do it with a, a vision that mm -hmm. you're going to be in business for 100 years. Wow. So doing it right in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it has about, you know, talk about the lawyers, you mm -hmm. know, um, attorneys, I mean, attorneys, accountants, mm -hmm. um, insurance mm -hmm. stuff, um, all the regulations that you have to go through to mm -hmm. legitimately start a business. Right. I mean, just the moment, when I first, when I, the, I, I wrote this book, cause I, I, like, I like dummies, right? Mm -hmm. The dummies, um, you know. Writing book for dummies. Yeah, books for dummies, dummies and stuff, yes. all that stuff. Right. I, li I like how they treat you like a kid, mm -hmm. a four-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. So this is how I treat people. But... It's, it's a, it gets advanced, but I right. start you off as a rookie. I call right. you rookie. Like right. the reader, right. page one, the reader knows that his or her name is, to me is rookie. Uh -huh. But until they graduate, and mm -hmm. the graduation is at the end of the book. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I, I break things down to you by holding your hand mm -hmm. and walking you up into City Hall mm -hmm. to get your business license. Mm -hmm. You know. See, I mean, not to cut you off too much, mm -hmm. but, no, that, but that, that's uh, one of the best ways I love it. To understand someone teaching me how to do it, you know what I mean? Just basically yeah. teaching me. I, I say that just like Denzel Washington says. He says, you know, you're talking like a four year old, you know what I mean? Just yeah. basically explain to me step by step and making it simple. I mean, what's the number one rule in life is just keeping it simple. Yeah. You know, one of the first rules, kiss. you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah you kiss factor. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I definitely appreciate that step by step process, man, because it's yeah. very important and very it's very important for people to learn, you know, that. Absolutely, way. absolutely. And, and the thing about it, this book is not just for promoters, though, mm -hmm. because you know, I try. I, I I wrote the book. I wrote. The, I've written the book so that a person who's looking at getting into mm -hmm. any part of the entertainment business, if you got to deal with the promoter, because you got if you're in the entertainment business, you have to deal with the promoter. Right. So I wrote it for for an agent, mm -hmm. for a club owner, mm -hmm. a venue owner, a venue operator. Mm -hmm. Anyone can read this book. Okay. Anyone. It's not just for promoters. Okay. But the reason why I, I decided to write the book. Not just for, you know, for money. Right. But I, I decided to write the book because if you go to Barnes & Noble, any bookstore right now, mm -hmm. typically, any bookstore that I know of, you're not going to see a book on the promotion business. Right. You may pick up um, uh, um, Donald Passman book, um, All You Need to Know About the Music Business, mm -hmm. and you may have one or two pages about promotion. Right. You know, I, when I first started my promotion business, I had a whole bunch of books on the table, mm -hmm. you know, trying to find out something, mm -hmm. you know, but... So I had to get this, right. this. I had to get like a page here, a mm -hmm. page here. Yeah, it's, it's, there, there aren't any that I know of. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably get some online because people could just write a book and then say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, my book is published. And, right. You know, buy it here mm -hmm. at Amazon mm -hmm. or something like that. But as far as in the major bookstores, there aren't any. Mm -hmm. You know, and there weren't any at the time when I started my business. Mm -hmm. So I, I just looked at it as, you know, all the experience that I have, all the experience that friends of mine have, mm -hmm. I have all that stuff in there. I have... Um, how people can avoid pitfalls, mm -hmm. you know, learn from my mistakes, learn from the mis mistakes of others. Because mm -hmm. I would spoil you. Like the first five years, the first five years, I didn't lose any money. Mm -hmm. You know, I made money for five years straight. Mm -hmm. Five years. I didn't lose money until I got arrogant. Well, I was always arrogant. I was kind of, I've been arrogant all my mm -hmm. life. But I was um, not in a nasty way. Right. Well, Just more, honest, confident, you say that. more confidence. More right. confidence.